My next guest lives in Solva in West Wales. He's a young man who's making a mark for himself in a rather rarefied world, that of the marine designer. One of his latest creations is this strange looking craft. It's a lifeboat designed to be launched in rough and difficult conditions and to be able to withstand fire, the sea, and the prospect of being dashed against the ship's side during launching. It might be the lifeline which could save the lives of 50 people who might be sealed inside it. The hull of the prototype we're showing here was made in Llanelli, and one way or another, Wales has made a great contribution to this side of marine safety. My guest has had an interesting career so far as a naval architect. He worked in Papua New Guinea, designing government shipping. He's designed oil tankers for BP, He's also designed vessels which survey the seabed and search for minerals. Ladies and gentlemen, from that delightful little seaside village in West Wales, Solver, will you please greet Richard Morgan. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Richard, I must admit at the beginning that I know nothing about marine technology at all. Uh, the little knowledge I've gleaned was from a soap opera that went out on the Sunday evening a few months ago, which is nothing. Why did you go in for this? <coughs> I think it started uh, when I was a young boy and became interested in boats. And uh, along with that came an interest in engineering. And mm -hmm. it was a natural amalgamation of the two because a naval architect fundamentally is a professional engineer who who specialises in the design of boats uh, and other marine structures of that type. So it's something that grew right from my childhood, really. Yes, you didn't study at school, obviously. No, I studied uh, fairly conventional pre-engineering subjects at school and then went on to university and, and, and studied naval architecture there. Mm, it's very specialised, though, isn't it? It is a specialised uh, profession. Th there aren't many of us. Um, it, only a few thousand, I would say, in, in, in Britain. Um, but we've been around quite a while. Noah is credited as perhaps being the first naval architect. <laughs> um, yes, it is specialised, but um, becoming less so as, as the demands of the industry uh, become more general anyway. Mm. So what you're doing now is just improving on old Noah. Well, let's see what you've done. Your, your, your recent craft, it's quite, quite a big step forward in, ma in marine safety, actually. It is. Uh, Change does occur fairly slowly in, in, in marine and safety. This is it. Yes, you see it here. Um, it does represent quite a development. This is a, a dummy. What's he being, doing? Well, he's testing the instrumentation in the dummy to make sure that when the test actually takes place, it looks pretty brutal, <laughs> um, but then so is what's coming. When the test takes place, uh, we will get That's some sensible complete. results from, from the instruments fitted to the dummy. The instruments being read and recorded just there. Yes. Um, so this is the, the poor battered man? Yes, yes. How did he fare? Well, he survived. He doesn't look terribly happy just there, but um, he did mm. survive. So really, the, the, the first test, it has to go through a series of tests, obviously. That was the first test, just to see how the, the, um, the people inside would react yes. and uh, impact. Yes, you have two problems. One is whether the boat itself will survive what you do to it and, uh, and remain intact and serviceable. But, but secondly, and possibly more important, whether the people inside will survive, mm. because otherwise the whole exercise becomes rather pointless. Mm. We'll see some more tests now, but so far the boat has fared very well in all tests. It has. It? We're very pleased with it. Uh, all the tests that are required by law, if you like, have now been completed, and this particular class of boat is now... There we are. That's the second test where it's being dropped. That's right. Now, that's to simulate a situation where the helmsman releases the boat from the, the wires on the ship um, a little prematurely. And the boat's being dropped there from three metres. Gosh, and it's, the impact is great, isn't it? Yes, it's striking the water at something in the order of 14 or 15 miles an hour. Mm. Um, so that now is testing the craft, not the safety is, inside. That's correct. That's testing the craft. And immediately after that test, we had to demonstrate that the boat would start and manoeuvre and so on. Mm. And that was... Uh, successfully completed. Do you foresee the time when or here we, we're having another drop here. How many times did you do this? Actually we only dropped that particular boat once but it was filmed from a variety of different angles so that we could we could examine carefully what was happening to it when it hit the water. And was it near perfect coming out? Yes it was. There was slight damage that that is inevitable but uh, if you treat a boat like that but the damage was, was minimal, mm. and we were, we were very happy with the result. So do you now foresee the time when all um, oil rigs and tankers will carry one of these? Oh, yes. In fact, um, the law provides for all ships other than passenger ships, as a matter of fact, 
to carry a, an enclosed lifeboat of that type um, from now on, really. Uh, old ships can continue without them, but all new shipping mm. as from now. What happens at the moment? People are just lowered into ordinary craft, are they? What, what happens at the moment generally is that the boats are open, open to the sea, um, so there is an exposure risk, and they also don't have the self-writing mm. capability after a capsize that's now required. Right, well, that brings us on to the next test, actually, where the, the, the craft is rolled over, and this is quite staggering. Yes, now in this test here, the, the boat is closed and sealed. Uh, the engine is in fact running. And this simulates a case where immediately after launch, a big sea simply overpowers the craft and capsizes it. And any second now, it'll begin to roll out of the capsize. It takes seven or eight seconds. The engine continues to run. And the boat is then free to proceed on its way, clear of the, of the ship or whatever. Why is that? How does it do that? It's just buoyancy. Anyway, yes, there's bu there are buoyancy compartments built into the boat, which um, are of a size and a disposition that keep the boat afloat and make it self right. Yes, and here it's doing the same thing with the doors open. It yes. doesn't make sense. <laughs> this is uh, a case which unhappily has been proved um, in, in practice to, to occur and has caused loss of life in the past. Mm. Where a boat's overcome by a large sea, the doors are forced open or perhaps in the heat of the moment have never been closed the boat is swamped completely with water. It will still float, but it's necessary to prove that it will self-right. The water must be rushing in there now. Yes, it pours in and out through the door, through the doors as the boat rolls and a little bit more slowly this time, self-rights. That must be a marvelous moment when you're witnessing that for the first time. Well, it is, because you can predict with computers, as indeed we did, whether yes. or not that's going to occur, but there's no real test like the real test, and uh, it is a bit nerve-wracking. I'm sure. Is it a very costly operation? Oh, this, this yes, design it is. It must, it must be a very costly boat. Yes, it is. The the uh, the design and development uh, costs of a, of a project like this are high. Yeah. The boat, uh, and this has to be contained because it's a fairly competitive business, and commercially you have to keep the price of the finished product down. But uh, d designing and developing and proving that sort of performance um, is quite an undertaking. Mm. And the tests are very rigorous. We want to see another one now, another impact test, I believe. Yes. Now, this test simulates the case where the boat is swinging on the launching wires from the ship, and due to action of the sea or the mo motion of the ship, it hits the side. Mm. And that uh, steel plating on the side of the dock wall there represents the side of the ship. Now that's a test of both the lifeboat and and the and the occupants, mm. and that is a test particularly uh, rigorous for for the people sitting in the boat who mm. are strapped in, but nevertheless are subject to very high accelerations. Mm. Mm. How long does it take to design a craft like this, approximately? Uh, the first uh, of the class of these boats, I think, was taken from initial design through to prototype testing, which you've just seen there, in about nine or ten months. But that was a very compressed program. We mm. would have liked more time, but the new legislation had come into force and it was felt time to, to produce the thing. Mm. And the last test we want to show must have been the most nerve-wracking of all. <laughs> and heartbreaking too, for you to, for you to witness, the fire. This um, examines the situation where the boat is launched into a burning oil fire. It's instrumentated to see what happens, and there it is, totally engulfed in burning kerosene at a temperature between 1,500 and 2,000 degrees centigrade. You do awful things to your own designs, don't you? Yes, it was, uh, this was the most stressful of all tests, perhaps not for the boat, but certainly for the people involved. Mm. I feel like asking you, you know, you put set fire to it, what are you going to do next, smoke it? <laughs> I think we've run out of ideas, to be honest. I think, uh, <laughs> I think we've done all that you could reasonably expect the, the boat to, su to survive. How long did you say this lasted, this fire? This test uh, was intended to last 10 minutes, which is the statutory requirement. In fact, it was about 13 minutes before the fire was extinguished. Mm. Here you see it being extinguished, and there it is with its built-in fire protection system still running, and just minor scorching, which is very gratifying. Yes. Are some of these uh, boats used again and again in testing, or just once? Generally, they would only be tested, tested once, unless a new test came up that had to be... Um, done or test had to be repeated, but the boats can be reused after minor repairs, and indeed they are, 
and fitted out and, uh, and installed on ships or, or oil rigs or whatever. And briefly, Richard, marine safety in general, is it getting better? Yes, I believe it is. But it's a, it is a cumbersome system involving, as it does, international legislation. But the, 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 the indications are that it is getting better. Wonderful. That's an exciting new development anyway. Thank you very much. Richard Morgan. Thank you. because in part two we shall be back with my last guest who has designed that extraordinary underwear. And of course, there'll be another song from Selena. Don't go away now.